It's a like a, a chair in James Bond. Yes, like. yeah. <laughs> well, dude, it's fucking super nice to meet you. Yeah, Flo. nice to meet you, man. Yeah. So. Exciting. So, um, you are are you from Stuttgart originally? Uh, no, I'm actually from Berlin. You are from Berlin? Yeah. Oh wow. Where about? Uh, like um, up in the north, Panko. Yeah, it's, well, we know um, Panko. You know yeah. the song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there a Panko song? Yeah. What From, is it called? Uh, the Sonderzug nach Panko. Okay, can you, you know? sing it? Or? No, no. Better, I don't. I rather don't. Okay, <laughs> all right. And then, um, so you, you went down to, uh, where you studied in Pforzheim, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what was your experience like there? Uh, in Pforzheim, um, my experience was, well, superb, I must say, like a uh, super small group of people. Like I studied with in my semester seven guys, so it was like um, super um, like concentrated, yeah. you know, and yeah, I mean, each semester just gives you another spin like in the second semester first semester you just basically don't do anything you just go to like um um like philosophy courses and art classes and so on and so forth nothing car design related at all oh, so it's very like generic yeah yeah but yeah. like art like artistic generic yeah or, okay. yeah exactly okay. okay like um how do you approach certain things feelings emotions and stuff like that okay also like classic art um, classes and like when you come there you think ah oh, I'm gonna go do car design right away but you don't they don't want you they want to um, somehow even the ground before they can then teach you the stuff okay I mean nevertheless in the first semester we had our evening sessions of sketching all together like that's what okay. everyone was waiting for basically okay. like okay. usually you're the only one who's doing this stuff you know and then all of a sudden you're in a group of uh, the like-minded guys yes and that's that's just uh, very very empowering like and then second semester starts and it's like one project each week so just sketching 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 like filling walls with sketches um third semester is learning alias which is super helpful in the end as you might know yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. and um and what, what was the alias support like or the teaching was it was it good yeah yeah lutz fugner um he's like one of the heads of Fortsheim next to james kelly and yeah he's he's a real genius in teaching alias okay. i must say okay like after the semester, you, you're down with alias, basically. Okay. Um, then you do a clay model. Yeah. Like all the process, like f um, taking the shapes into negative and then putting it back to positive again, like uh, laminating and all that kind of stuff. Oh, like, like so GRP like, molding. Yeah, yeah. like okay. really dirty wow. process. Cool. And yeah, you just sleep in the, in the workshop. Fifth semester. Uh, at the same time, sleeping at a workshop, you are stressing about getting an internship for the fifth semester because then what you when you should get one. So yeah, F like so, a semester is how long? Six months. Six months. Exactly. Okay, so first yeah. semester, you're talking about the third year or um, fifth semester is starting of third year. Starting of third year. Okay, yeah. and you start applying when in um, in mid of well, some guys did it after third okay. semester. And then already took off the fourth semester, yeah. so they changed uh, the semesters basically. But usually the way it's done, it's you during your fourth semester, you send out your portfolio, and with like three or four projects, like or now maybe maybe seven weekly projects, just sketch based and one alias model. That's it, wow. you know. And then maybe some personal art stuff or whatever. Um, however, you try to stick out of the the crowd, basically. Is this sorry to interrupt? Is this mm -hmm. on? This is on the bachelor program. Or, yes. Okay. Yes. All okay. bachelor. All okay. bachelor. Yeah. Okay. Um, masters very different. Okay. Um, they they know you already know car design and you had had the background study already. So yeah, basically it's it's a, it's a completely different story. Yeah. Um, well, fifth semester, it's. Like, like it's super intense. Some people getting an internship and you're sitting there like, oh, no answers yet. And 
shit, am I not good enough or whatever, then first time with uh, the self-doubts come, you know, and then you get an internship and you're like, oh, okay, good. That's amazing. That's I an amazing met... feeling, yeah. yeah. Same with the receiving the, um, the letter of application, is it called? Acceptance. Acceptance, or... yeah, okay. for fourth time, like, dude, that feeling, like, I, I still remember it, like, I had the, the envelope in my hand that I didn't know what I could expect. First time I got rejected, so I was even no, more nervous on the second approach, so, whew, yeah, yeah, still gets me heat up. <laughs> can, you, can you tell me a bit about, like, what you did to pass the interview process the second mm -hmm. time? Mm -hmm. So, actually, let's say, uh, in that sense, I'm a bit of a copycat because one of my best friends, or still my best friends, um, he did, like, I think, alias modeling, or no, poly modeling, back in 2005 or something. 3D S Max was brand new at that time, I think, and then he's from Russia, and then there was a design contest for Lada. So he participated in um, creating a body kit for the Lada Niva. Oh, wow. And for that, he, he was able to model before he was able to sketch. And so he thought, okay, what am I gonna actually, what am I gonna model actually? Then he started to sketch and he, think, he thought, man, man, that's, that's fun. That's fun actually, not model what everyone else did before, model your own stuff basically. And that's how he get it start, got started and I thought like, whoa, that's, that's, that's fucking cool. And he looked up Fordsheim University and I just jumped on the train. We basically, he and his brother, Semenov twins, maybe you know them. Oh, Alexei. Alexei, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and Pete. Pete I, I've yeah. never met his brother. I was with okay. Alexei. At, he was interning at Volvo when I ah, was yeah. there. Ah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah, those two. Pete was the, the igniter, basically, and Alexei and I, we just followed along. Um, I mean, yeah, he said that they pushed each other. Like, yeah, fuck, yeah, yeah. And then he yeah, would like, yeah. he would be like, they wouldn't even be in the same place, but he would see that uh, his that his brother had posted stuff online. And he's yeah, like, fuck, yeah, I need to yeah. raise my game and I need to mm -hmm, do mm -hmm, it again and mm -hmm. again. And that's basically what happens also in Fordsheim. Like you push each other. Okay. Like the one guy is always raising the bar, and then you try to keep up and. But you, you, it's, an, it's a healthy competition, yes. not like in some design studios. It's, it's, it's a really healthy competition. Like you, you criticize each other, but, but in, a, in a good way. Yes. Yeah. So. And how many yeah. people are in like one, in, in one semester, for example? Um, in my semester, there were seven people. Okay. Others like eight to 12, maybe tops. Okay. That's the most. Okay. Yeah. And then, so you did a couple of internships mm -hmm. and then, um, after that, mm -hmm. you got you got your first job. Yeah, well, I did um, McLaren first in in Woking. Yes, which I really enjoyed. And Woking, like, or because I lived in Woking for a while as well. I didn't enjoy Woking. Woking's a I, shit. I yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, but the place there and the people, the just, studio just looks amazing. insane. Dude. Yeah, it's just. I mean. For me, the studio can look whatever it wants, but the people, it's what matters, basically. And it was just really cool. I really enjoyed my time there. And after this, I went to Wolfs Wolfsburg, Volkswagen. Yeah. So it was like, well, I don't want to say hell in heaven, but complete different. Polar opposites. Like, yeah, exactly. Thank you. And well, I just from there on, I knew that what kind of studio I, I prefer, basically, yes. and what kind of car. I mean, I'm a petrol head, so um, sporty cars appeal more to me, of course. And In your yeah. portfolio, did you only have like a bunch of sports cars? Whew, that's a good question. I think there are some like, um, like sedans and um, hatchbacks and stuff like that, but, you know, they always look to t uh, tend to look like sports cars in the end okay. <laughs> on the yeah, sketches. Sure. So as long as you don't build a model of them, they all look like sports cars. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, of course. Or at least one over a package, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, the reason why I ask is that um, 
we when i when i studied the lecturers kind of encouraged us to have like a variety of stuff yeah yep. and that i think i was having this discussion with another guy a couple of episodes back and we kind of went backwards and for backwards and forwards on like what is the correct approach to take mm-hmm. and i was arguing that um that's a very romantic notion but what can happen as a result of that is that the whole thing becomes unfocused yep if each un, unless you nail every single thing you know because you look at it and you go okay this is okay this is okay that's not so great but and then at the end it's like what is this guy actually really into what is he good at mm-hmm. that's the big mm-hmm. thing mm-hmm. and i i don't know i it's a it's a tricky thing because I, I also another friend of mine also subscribes to the notion of if you want to be the guy doing sports cars have a portfolio full of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah. I agree. I mean, if you're into something, you're going to do a better job. Okay. That's it. Like, you can force me to do a bus or something, and uh, I will maybe try and end up with something, but there are some guys who like to do buses and trucks. That's just the way it is. They always like these kind of vehicles so they spend a lot of time thinking about them how to improve them what could work what doesn't work what makes sense what doesn't so the end result will be more thought through and better in the end like you see if there if the design is well thought through you see that like if it's just for styling reasons it you feel that it's not on purpose you know what i mean yeah 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 Yeah. and were you doing was it exteriors that you wanted to do well yeah that's the kind of set story turn basically like after graduating i went to form free like is that a like a what is that that's a it's a design studio close to porsche okay and um, they like a supplier to yes exactly exactly So I started working there and I initially did a project there for Porsche with about a um, a sport seat, super sporty seat, like as sporty as it can get. But still, um, like personally, I was doodling like in my notebook at school, like before uni school, I was doodling cars and not seats or something like that, you know. So yeah, I, I kind of went down that road then. And maybe that's why I, for now, left the path of being a car designer full-time. Maybe, I don't know. But, um, yeah, you never know. Like, <laughs> and then, So you were, there, you were there for, what, three years or something like that? Yeah, three years in, in Form 3, always like back and forth with working with Porsche. With, um, we did some projects with Smart. We did some exteriors also my my boss he he gave us a one uh, third scale model in clay to work on which was really cool and i enjoyed it a lot but yeah smart brabus we did we tried we tried like now the one that came out yeah the the electric one yes it was supposed to be a brabus but they turned it into the electric one Ah. So we worked on that partially, but um, yeah, not pointing any fingers on which corners were done by me or okay, which were not. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I mean... And then you kind of painted yourself into interiors, right? Yeah, well, I mean, I don't suck at it. So yeah. I, I, I kind of enjoy the, like, let's say, um, Negroni style type of... of, of um, rendering like really detailed pencil sketch yes. and then just um, blending in a bunch of colors and shades. I really enjoy that process somehow and doesn't apply to exterior. Okay. But um, I, I kind of got into that and I'm, I'm not bad at it. So, and, but do you feel, yeah. do you feel that, um, did it feel like a, like a, a failure to you? Because some, some, some guys feel that like, if I end up doing interiors, that it's a failure. But I also, I've very, like, pleasantly been surprised by the fact that I've met quite a few interior designers that were like, I don't want anything to do with exterior Mm -hmm. design. I want to be designing interiors. It's more appealing for me. There's more innovation. 
and there there isn't this like kind of formula that you that mm-hmm. sometimes can be followed repetitively in yep. exterior design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally get what you mean. Um, well, in the beginning, it definitely felt like a failure, or not not like a failure. I like I tried to push myself out of this situation by after work doing exterior proposals in my for my portfolio and then sending out stuff like but that that eats you up like you need to take a break at some point like uni was super intense and then starting to work and then just on your time off you basically also work and that's that's not the way to live basically just some people in this area do it just for car design but for me, um, there's a life outside of car design, of, obviously. And I think, like, after a while, like, I, I, I always saw, like, the exterior department, um, like, the fights were bigger within the departments. Oh, okay. And also of what I heard here from friends, like, the political decisions in exterior are more drastic than in, in interior, I feel. So... Maybe it's more emotional exterior for for most people. I don't know. It's debatable. Isn't yeah, it's it? debatable. But um, for me, I can have a much more relaxed look at what I design in interior. Like I, I, I figure if I actually work on a big project on exterior, I get much more emotionally involved, which is a good and a bad thing. So. But yeah. did you? But you had you had fun i mean did you enjoy the process or was it was it constantly like this fomo feeling of like (laughs) fuck i want to be over there um no i mean from time to time i i really enjoyed it like in in porsche i worked on on full interior projects and stuff like that which which was was great good experience um i mean i definitely want to if i go back to car design i will go back into exterior for sure or no that, or that no yeah okay. i think i think that's like my it's, take like that on, itch is still there yeah yeah no. okay i mean i i really also from my project i'm doing on the side you know i'm i'm really into um like 80s and 70s car design it's like you see the the the, the pen sketch of of the designer still in the finished car that's what i'm missing today but i'm hoping like car design is getting to a point where you cannot do more like you have to do less to be different now and i hope that uh, exterior will change for for the better now so yeah maybe i'm just waiting for this time to come and then i'll join again do you how po- <laughs> like how possible do you think that is in a in a big oem because you're always going to have these committees of people. Yeah. And, and not, I'm not even talking about design. I mean, you've got people from marketing. You've got some business wankers as well <laughs> that, that think they want to get involved. Everyone wants to be involved in design. Everybody wants to be able to say, oh, I was responsible for X, Y, and Z, even if they don't work in design. Mm-hmm. And I, th- it does, I think, at least from what I've seen, mm-hmm. that can... People don't realize sometimes how miserable they are. You know, they're doing their, their, their dream job, but the, the realities, and I'm, it's not all the time, there's, there's very good experiences as well, but they, they, that can also suck the enjoyment out of the whole process mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, partially that's what happened for me, and um, that's why in the end I decided to, to go down another uh, path. But don't get me wrong, I still, I, I really like cars. Um, and I don't know, I think it's the difference between, for me, for example, the difference between studying and actual working experience. That's two worlds. Like, it's not the same. Like, when you, when you study and you do your own projects, you're the boss. You decide what you do, however you want to do it. And all of a sudden you graduate and then you're like, okay, I have to do what someone else says, basically. Like designers don't have that level of freedom. Like some have, like, but most of the designers don't. 
And I think that's where this, th that's the problem, this difference between expectations and reality that can like force you into feeling miserable, as you said, about um, your dream job, basically. Like, hey, I want to study car design. It's the coolest thing that like, just like 3000 people do it worldwide. So it must be so cool. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it is, I mean, the, the bottom line is it is a dream job. Yeah, it and is. And I've had some beautiful experiences in it. And I, I've, there's been projects that I've really, really enjoyed mm -hmm. it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for, I'm really, really grateful for, for the experience, you mm -hmm. know. Um, but um, like the, the transition for you going from, from from being a, an intern mm -hmm. to being paid to do your job like being professional mm -hmm. was that also a big a big leap i mean did you mm -hmm. did you feel a sense of pressure or did you feel less less stress because i'm not going into a quote unquote big oem directly? i mean i mean i it, it felt quite pressurizing because i just had a 6 week contract to begin with Okay, so you had to prove yourself. So I had to prove myself. Okay. And luckily I did. And then it went on and went on and went on. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, some people, they, they just immediately get those OEM offers. And they never see this side of the car design, like being in need of a job. It, it puts in a very bad position. And You mean just being, like getting it straight away and then... Then still not feeling fulfilled. Is that what you're talking about? Or um, well, maybe maybe sometimes if you if you struggle to get something, you appreciate it more afterwards. Maybe that part uh, that's the part they are missing. But I think you cannot you cannot generalize this at okay. all. Like yeah. the the experience the per uh, the the personal experience can differ so much. So I think you cannot um, generalize this. But it was good. Your first experience. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's definitely really good. That's yeah, good. Yeah. And then, so you, then, and then you were at Porsche for what, 18 months or? Uh... Um, I think, I think, I don't remember exactly, to be honest, like two yeah. and a half years. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then, so then at that time you start doing the other stuff on the side. Well, I was thinking about um, the other stuff on the side, like. I was not feeling fulfilled as I think I'm speaking for most designers like you see Instagram and there are these competitions and everyone is just participating in them because they are not fulfilled in their day-to-day -day jobs and I think that's just the, the the valve to to let out that creative like outburst yeah and for me um, well I how, how my side project started actually i i did like a paper model of a of a huge shark like one meter 50 or one meter 20 um in size yeah? oh wow and I, I like man that was fun like i i really got got chilled doing that you like, didn't worry about g2 curvature for example for example exactly okay <laughs> and then i just thought hmm why is there not something like this for cars because i mean okay animals are great but cars are the best also okay you said that <laughs> and um then i i just went online and had a look and all these models out there of, of paper cars are like in this scale like super small super detailed and you have to be a, a like an origami master nerd basically to do it and I felt like the, the paper craft I did for the shark was really easy to do because it was so so big, basically. Like, yeah. So bigger scale is it's, more forgiving. It's, yeah. It's more forgiving, okay. exactly. And yeah, that's how how basically I got started on this one. But I mean, it was very slow. Like to develop these uh, sculptures, it takes it takes some time, and I had to figure out the process how to get there. Like in the beginning, the first car I did was the F40. Um, but and you it thought was, that was going to be easy, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. And um, I did it like, like with huge pulleys. And I thought, okay, the pulley is going to be adding stiffness. 
but uh, the, the angles were so small that the uh, stiffness was like not there at all. <laughs> oh, so I, the, I'm building the, the huge... actual physical tension. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, okay. and so I built a, like also 120, like fifth scale or fourth scale um, F40 and just like wobbled around, fall apart. And I don't know, I was like, hmm, it's not working like that. And but still, it was it was a fun process. And um, then with that, like in the drawer, I was like, man, there is there is something in it. Like I can I could make it work basically. And then I just like really was a decision within two weeks that I said like end of the year, okay, I have to I have to renew my contract manually. Okay. So I said, hmm, yeah, I'm not gonna do it. So, so I, told, okay. I told everyone like, okay, that's it for now. I enjoyed the stay. Thanks for having me. But I want to perceive another path now. Like wow. I'm going to try something. Because if I don't try, I never know if it would work or not. Like after work, you can, you can either do your portfolio to get another job, a better job, whatever that means to you. Um, or put another sketch on Instagram. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah, I figured like I have to make a cut and I did. So, and that, that feel felt quite scary, but at the same time, yeah, like first two weeks I did nothing, nothing it was like, okay. <laughs> and that was also important. Like somehow you, you need that, you need that break to make it obvious to you that, okay, now things are going to be different. And from there on, like, uh, things start changing slowly. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't barely wake up to my alarm now. Like, I wake up before. Like, okay. I want to do stuff, you know? Like, yeah. somehow this, this kind of flame was, was there in the, in the, during the studies, but in the job it was, from time to time it was there when it was a cool project and you really wanted to push. But if there's uh, not a good project on, then you're like, ah, oh, again, <laughs> you know? Wow. So yeah, I, I really miss that feeling, that, that intrinsic feeling of wanting to do something, you know? Like, yeah. like yeah, it, it's just, I spend way more hours working now than I did uh, when I was employed, okay. way more. Yeah. And I, I, I even earn less. But I don't care for now because I know in the long, long run it will uh, work out. So, and I'm confident of that. So yeah. you've actually, the, it, it's a business now. You start. It's a business it. now, okay. yeah. yeah. I'm freelancing on the side, mm -hmm. but really just two days a week or something. Is that for a, like another supplier or is, um, how does that work? So it's, um, in the beginning I was doing like some, some, um, how to say, ah, words missing, um, not collaboration. Uh, um, collaboration? No, 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 not collaboration. Like if someone asks you to do, to, to, to make a piece of art. Oh, a commission. Commissions, commissions. thank you, thank you. Um, so there was Like some, art commissions. Yeah, right? there was okay. a, like a, a commission for um, Messe Stuttgart. Yes. Um, as you know, the, the, um, I A E A A. Yeah. We want to change location okay. because the Frankfurt is apparently not good enough anymore or for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. It's not attracting it much people and all fairs in Germany applied to get the the international automobile salon. Ah, okay. So I was asked to do like a huge paper model um, of the city of Stuttgart or the fair of Stuttgart like a like a pop-up card yeah you know my i don't know if you checked on instagram i have those cards which you can open up and then some 3d shape starts to happening when you fold it i've seen one or two yes uh -huh. i don't know if it's the same one that we're thinking about but i have seen uh -huh. a couple yes and and at at some point for example some company um some um marketing company who did the a uh, pitch for messe stuttgart uh, hit me up and i had to do this massive um 3D pop-up card for the fair of Stuttgart. So wow. it was like, okay, just, yeah. And they, they just contacted you out the Yeah, building. because um, they sit, they're located in Ludwigsburg and I was located in Stuttgart and said, 
they need someone right now and they saw that I can do this kind of stuff and I said well in this complexity I don't know but I can try I will I'll push hard and that was like my first um, job that I got because of this these sculptures okay so it? they yeah. saw the stuff online yeah yeah, right. yeah exactly okay. so and just all, where on Instagram or on, on Instagram your, yeah. okay wow. on Instagram okay. Yeah. and yeah well then I'm I have some some clients which I cannot name now no 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 but sure. it's like yeah, it's like vivid, but as I said before, okay. like I can shift things around. It doesn't get into my daily business with Paper Legend. It just it just blends in and like also provides me the, let's say, um, stability in life because I cannot yet live from Paper Legend, let's say. Um, it's getting there, I, but I need to need to work it out basically. Okay. So it's it's kind of a nice nice um like i don't know the english word grundversorgung in german <laughs> uh, i don't know what is it? Cla uh, classes classes more well versed in german like to, to cover the base of okay. your life basically yeah? okay that's that's why i do the the um freelance, freelance stuff yeah, yeah. and everything on top the the time i can put to paper legend i put it down to paper okay. legend okay yeah do you have a girlfriend at the moment or is she listening i don't know uh, hopefully <laughs> Hopefully. Well, I, I don't well know. Um, it's in it's it, complicated. It's in May. Okay. Yeah, I, it's, complicated. it's complicated. It's really complicated. Okay, but it, okay. So, so, the, but the thing is, Paper Legend was there before she came on the scene. Or no, she's a gold digger. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the Very pa good. Paper digger. Okay. So, is is she? Okay. So, is it? Is it? Are you finding it difficult to try and dedicate time to her? Like, because you're fighting with these two things, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. I mean. We know each other since uh, seven years or something, yeah. and now we give it a go. Okay. Uh, oh, so okay. actually, right. actually, I think I'm. I didn't have a girlfriend in a long time. Okay. I think because I was just so caught up in Consumed. in yeah. I don't know. I was just busy in my mind. Yes. And um, now I'm physically more busy, yes. but in my my mind is more clear. Okay. Basically. Okay. Um, okay. And I think that's why I made. There's a decision for this step now. So okay, so yeah. so so you you said now that physically you you're more busy, but in your mind you're clearer. Yeah, is that more focused basically? Is that as a result of you getting some traction and uh, and things actually starting to move that you don't feel this frantic panic to go like I need to do 24 hours every single day? Mm -hmm. Well, there were times when I was like this. Yes, like. Mm, like not stopping before 11 o'clock or maybe even after midnight but as i said with the with doing the portfolio after after your day-to-day -day job okay it's not a thing that you can do forever okay like like at some point you you'll just have to take a break and then i just if i feel like that i just take like two or three days like completely doing nothing okay. like most of the work weekends I do maybe one day working, one day relaxing. Okay. So yeah, but it, it, there's not a rule, and and that's what I enjoy. Like like if I have to do a lot of stuff and I want to do a lot of stuff, then I just work the weekend. Yes. So if not, then then I can chill. And I I mean yeah, you have to be at peace with yourself to to kind of give your time, give yourself that time off as well that's like, that's true yeah, yes yeah. yeah it's easy to get caught up in just working and then there be nothing else but that's that's not a that's um not the way to go i think no way to do business yeah exactly okay. there's to be there's to be joy yes actually. absolutely yeah. 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 yeah 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 that's that's i couldn't agree with you more friend. Yeah. Yeah. and um what so what i wanted to know was like um specifically you made the first couple of models mm -hmm. once you finally kind of got what something that was working mm -hmm. and you thought okay we can actually produce this mm -hmm. you said that you first made the shark and then after that you tried the f40 it wasn't quite working did you were you posting that stuff straight away or or not um well that's kind of an interesting question because like um 
I started like my social media channel on, on Instagram. I started like around one year ago. Okay. So 2019. So it was half a year after I quit. So before that, I didn't show anything. No. Like, yeah. I mean, you, you have to feel comfortable with what you show. Like now to some um, followers, I even showed my first model, which is really shitty. But I still shared with them because they were in like in a in a one hour live stream on on Instagram or something, you know. No one will ever see that. Just my uh, dearest fans, basically, you yes, know. Yeah. And w for them to share this kind of stuff is cool. But I wouldn't like to let everyone else see it because okay. yeah, it's. I mean, bad publicity is also good, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, but that's the thing. There's like a, it's a double-edged sword, isn't it? Because yeah. you, on the one hand, you, um, you don't want to release any shit, mm -hmm. but at the same time, um, you kind of, at some point, you need to start talking to people and growing yep. your dear fans, as you call mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Like they might, you know, they those those early things are the things that might entice them in right i mean what it, yep. have you do you have a clearer perspective on how you would have done things differently up until this point or are you kind of happy the way you you played it i think i would have thinking back i would have started instagram earlier because i launched instagram like after the first um like big photo shoot of um of the Mesa. of the of the uh, models i did okay. yeah and then I just started my Instagram. Okay. And then that's when I started to collect leads or emails for the um, Kickstarter campaign. Okay, so that, so that like this this is shit that I'm really interested yeah, in. Okay. Yeah. So you 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 launch Instagram with the first mm -hmm. photo shoot. Yeah. And then you start talking to people. Yes, exactly. Like showing my face from the first second. I think it's very important. Yes. Like people connect to Even if people. you look like me. Like cause you, <laughs> this guy's pretty handsome and I, yeah, I, you've definitely got a face for, for, for the TV or social media. You'll be the judge, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> so, and so it's important to put a face to the, to yeah, the work. Yeah, definitely, okay. definitely. Because as you know, people relate to people. Yes. Like, and they, it's part of the storytelling as yeah, well, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And if you arrange yourself with that, it gets more comfortable. Okay. Like, like in the beginning, recording yourself and knowing, okay, maybe, uh, I don't know, a normal Instagram has maybe 3,000 users or followers. Maybe 500 of them will see your, your face then, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And you, you, you stress about that in the beginning. But at some point, you, if you get comfortable with this, you get much more relaxed and much more personal like not staged you know what i mean yeah 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 absolutely and, yeah, um, yeah i mean i would have if someone's going want to go online at some point i say do it right away okay the earlier the better even because if it's not practice perfect, is king yeah? okay yeah yeah don't let perfection get in the way of productivity exactly much respect awesome yeah. yeah okay and then so you started a kickstarter campaign right yes okay so what like i guess it's all public anyway mm -hmm. what in your mind did you need to raise to get this thing off the ground what i needed um well how these things are produced um they they get on a on a plotter which is basically a printer with a knife so okay. like the the knife is is going along the edges and cuts out all the pieces mm -hmm. There are plotters, um, like the ones that the one that I needed was like twelve thousand euros or something. Oh, so wow. that's not okay. something you just pay out of the pocket like that. No. And so basically, what I asked for was the money for the first plotter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's that was like the thing to to see. Okay, are there enough? Is there enough demand? Yes. And is it worth to get the plotter? Were you not tempted to add on an extra 90 or 100 grand to get a 9-11? That, that'll, that'll come later. Okay, all right. That's a very mature approach to have for him. <laughs> so, okay, so you, and you, you did a Kickstarter campaign and it was a success? No. 
No. It failed miserably. Okay. Yeah. And then what? Were you disheartened? I actually, that's what I learned. Never get, never give up. Just if you give up, you lost. But if you try again, then you, you're still in the game. Sure. So I asked for in the end $15,000, yeah. I think. And I think like 4,500 were raised or something. And yeah, I just, I just collected like 150 like emails to send out the stuff for my Kickstarter campaign to. And that was just not enough. And I, that's because I just did one month of Instagram. Like there was not enough, um, let's say, buying pressure. Yeah. So or momen- the, you need more momentum. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Like that's like Kickstarter is also, it's not a magic uh, weapon that you just um, put your project and you're going to get rich. It's, a, it's basically um, a marketing tool. Like... It's a platform and if, for example, 50% get, gets, gets funded in the first day, then Kickstarter is taking this and putting it on all their channels and oh, newsletters. So they, okay, so that and, gives it a boost, right? Yes, okay. and, and it, like self-propelled basically. Okay. I didn't know that before. So How did you I, find that out? Like reviewing afterwards what what happened, why, okay. why did it fail? Okay. And um, like all the the sales came from my followers yeah but not a single sale came from kickstarter and that's because in the first day it was funded like 20 percent or or maybe yeah 15 percent yeah they, and, and the first day i was like super confident like whoa one day two thousand euro yeah i'll just I'm need to king. wait another week yeah, yeah <laughs> just yeah. another week and i'm yeah. done yeah, yeah. great but then it just dropped okay and not much happened then um yeah well and i don't know if how different things would have gone if i just set like 5000 as a target maybe then the half would be raised and then kickstarter would push it and more people would see it and it would self propel to the 15000 or even overshoot it uh, i don't okay. know that that's also a possibility possible, right? possible. so so tell but me something in, in, in yeah. this instance when when if you've got a target for what you you say fifteen thousand mm-hmm. dollars and you only raise four what happens if you don't reach your target does mm-hmm. that do you still get connected to those people and they still have like a, a first option to buy when it gets produced mm-hmm. or how does that work and do you get the money that's the most important yeah yeah thing. it's in my savings account for the 9-11 okay no. all right no no okay. no no, no. The money, <laughs> if it's not funded the money goes back to the um to the guys who did the okay so you, if you don't reach the target that's yeah okay that's that's why Kickstarter is such a big thing. Like the people can actually invest in something without having a risk. I okay. mean, if it's not funded, they get the money back immediately. Okay. If it gets funded and the people cannot produce the stuff or not hold their um, promises, promise, yeah. then... They get their money back. No. 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 Oh, fuck. Okay. Like, do you know the coolest cooler? The coolest cooler? There was a huge... Kickstarter campaign yeah. funded 17 million for a um, drink cooler and it had like loads of gadgets inside and whatever yeah and it was so hyped like the people loved it like there was a I think like a blender and there was like I don't know every this thing had everything yeah did it have a cure for coronavirus yes it was the coolest cooler awesome yeah okay (laughs) no i don't know that i'm not an expert in that field okay but um the thing is the guy produced like the first um batch bunch batch 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 batch, of of um of coolers which was massive because he knows okay 17 million maybe 300 each cooler so you can do the okay, math. I yeah. can't. I can't. <laughs> okay. Klaus, Klaus is fucking it's, smart. Klaus, what is that? Three hundred. A lot. Oh, a lot. lot. Okay, okay. So maybe two hundred thousand units. Let's say. Okay. Okay. And he fucked up the mold, and the first charge was completely fucked. So oh, he couldn't shit. use any of that, and then he burned all the money, like most of it. And so he couldn't. He, and afford. he didn't even buy nine eleven with that. That's fucking stupid. Jesus. And and also, like everything happens for a reason, I think. And 
I now realize that the plotter I got afterwards, which is the same one I wanted to get before, another story how I got that plotter, but I realized now that I could have never hold my promise on delivering the 250 um, sculptures that I would have to ship out until Christmas. Would, no, no way. Wouldn't be possible. And that Physically not and that possible. Because that would have fucked the whole thing up. Yeah, right? that would yeah. fuck my credibility yeah. and uh, the company's credibility yeah. and yeah. Wow. So how in the end, it, how, I can be glad. <laughs> <laughs> but how long does it take to, to cut one of your sculptures out? So I would say each individual sculpture sits around one and a half and two hours on the plotter. Okay. And you can, if you would cut that yourself yes. with your um, nail scissors, yes. um, it would take you, I'd say, five times. Five more times. Okay. It's five as much time. Okay. Five. No, that sounds wrong. Five. five, five. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Five times as much. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. That's the start. All right. And then, yeah. so okay, so you get you get a flat card. Yep. And then it's cut out. Yep. And you just start folding. Yes, exactly. Wow. And, and, and gluing. And gluing. Yeah. And is there a specific? Do you need like a special glue? Uh, I provide that. Like um, I, I looked for. I, I went to all kinds of different glue and I, I found one um, that you can just buy in a big bottle. So yes. no one would spend like half the money on the huge bottle of glue. Yeah. So I decided to, to refill it myself and stuff like that. So, and so you, do you have your own specific packaging for yes, the little yes, glue? And exactly. Okay. Yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. Cool. Yeah. So it's quite personalized then, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Okay, well, let's. Can we have a look at uh, how we how we're gonna do this, class? Is is he just holding? Just I guess just sitting there. Okay. Should I should I can grab you, one? Class, can you pass one to him? What's or? the frame like? Huh? So I, I don't really know. We can. Are we, we are we Instagram can... vertical? No. I don't know. We're, we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to make <laughs> some adjustments for sure. All right. Oh wow! Look at that. So this one is this is is this the latest one that you've done? Um, no, actually, this is one of the earliest um, because I'm I'm always experimenting, and um, this specific one is with a dear friend of mine, uh, Ivan. He's um, running an Instagram. It's called uh, Sell Porsche to Buy Porsche, and and he's doing. Like, as you can see, really cool, Very cool really cool stuff. sketches, stuff, really punchy sketches. And we just does said, he, when he does this stuff, does it just like, bang, 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 is he like a plotter or does it, does he spend ages on underlays and stuff? Um, like or you, you, no, I think you it's, also don't have to give his secrets away as well. Uh -huh. we, we let him, let him say it. <laughs> but I, very cool shit. I love it. Yeah. Mm, no, he's quite, um, he's, he's Russian. And Russians are just gifted with colors. Yeah, what the fuck that, is up with that's, that? I don't know. It, every Russian is insanely Machine. good with yeah. colors. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, he's just. Um, I think he's just um, throwing throwing them out like, like, like it's nothing. Okay. I know right. he's, he's doing it a lot, so he got very good at this. Okay. And so yeah. enough about him. But you are the <laughs> you are the star of the show. This is your time. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is like the maybe the, the fifth sculpture or something like that. I mean, I did the 935 as a top view sculpture. Okay. I don't have it with me right now, but um, this was like a more, um, let's say, creative take on the whole thing. Okay. Like this whole metal paper looks cool, but can get boring okay. after time, especially. So you, sorry, you did you start with metal paper? Were yeah. They met oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I started using uh, just matte paper, which was not working well because yeah. it, it, it missed something. And then as soon as you get um, metal paper, it adds this reflectivity and uh, just has more play to it. So there is a purpose for color materials, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, nice <I> question. <laughs> what are you suggesting? I'm not suggesting anything. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. Okay. No, definitely. So yeah. that and then that, that is just like thin. What is that? It's just card. There's nothing yeah. underneath. Yeah. Um, wow. I mean, it's basically hollow, 
and um, actually no you cannot look in from any side okay. but you see the material thickness here basically like wow. this is I think two times okay. the paper okay. and yeah it's just it gets the stiffness from from the connections um, mega. I mean I'm, I'm building an alias yes because in usually the way paper craft is done like I'm, I'm not the first one doing cars from paper like there are many guys doing this already okay. but I think my take on this is that I'm doing them doing the main work in alias which gives me these clean lines okay and um, like the control over the lines and as you know in poly modeling it's just to suck like soap what soap yeah yeah sometimes yeah i mean not everybody there, there are guys that can control yeah, it well, yeah, but, yeah. Um, yeah but in the end um yeah well that's just um part was part of the developing process like first i started in in poly modeling mm -hmm. and then i just switched to alias to try and okay. um but it just worked so much better yeah. this one's not for sale right not no, yet was, not was yet for, oh but you are going this is going to be for yes, sale. yes okay, yes 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 awesome. okay. i mean the thing is um the sculptures are quite pricey um they are not cheap especially if you look at it it's okay it's paper you think why is it so expensive but it's just coming down to the time on the plotter yes and um like it's all produced in germany for now okay so made in eu low carbon footprint exactly okay for now for now okay um there there's no way around that i think um and especially with this one I have to pay even a fair share sure and then this would end up at somewhere around 150 euros maybe so that one okay. yeah does that but obviously without the frame right yeah without a frame okay. yeah okay. yeah um so how long would it take to assemble something like that that would take i reckon you or me me uh, you. And I, dude i'm like the fucking stupidest guy you've ever met in your life so <laughs> you need to take that into account <laughs> Then um, I'd say nine hours. Nine hours. Nine hours. Wow. I do it in six, maybe. You can do it in yeah. six. Okay. Yeah. It takes time because the the glue has to dry okay. from time to time. Okay. But um, yeah. Very cool. So you and you've got another. So you've you've got another one. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, so. Like I, I brought these two models today, uh, Oscar, just to to show the the variant, the variance, the variation. Ah, okay. The deviation. Deviation. Is it called? Uh, yeah. The variety. Thank you. Variety. Um, that I'm offering base basically. So this is like a really basic um, beginner model, but um, but and, and you see so cool, see like I used some some print on textures, and um, yeah. yeah. Huh? Um, I used some 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 textures to to give the detail, um, but still keeping it simple to build. Okay. So if you just build a body, like without the wheels, it's done in in like one and a half hours to two hours. If you decide to build the wheels, which is not so paper legend actually, because usually um, when you when you have like the the top view sculptures or something if you just see it like that you don't need the wheels okay so sometimes okay. i just they are sunk into the to the background and then you don't need the wheels so okay. the wheels are actually something my followers ask me to do okay so yeah um so i decided to give it a give it a go um yeah yeah well so, and that's like that's like the smallest scale that's, uh, that i will offer because everything below it's just too too complicated to okay. do and, and my approach to this project was like i want to give the ability to do this kind of artwork to everyone okay like as i said before like the other other cars other paper cars online they are super complicated okay like you, you but also th those things tend to lose their soul as well i think sometimes when when it's got too much detail you mm -hmm. know i mean then you can just buy a, a another cast car you know for sure Absolutely. i mean i mean there are competitors in this field with this scale exactly okay in in the bigger ones you have to reach deep down into your pocket if you want to get like a one to eight scale um, okay. um cast model i okay. think 
What um, is what yeah. is that cost, Flo? That's um, currently because it's on pre-order now. It's nineteen ninety-five, and it's gonna go up to twenty-nine. Okay. So it's it's a good um, it's a range for a gift, let's say, and that's why I also introduced this kind of product. Like I'm 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 trying to work things out because. Yeah. Um, well, I'm, yeah, I mean, these sculptures, if you see those, they're cool, but you think, oh, can I do it? Right. Can yeah. I do it? That's I, like, I, I, you said nine hours. I don't think I could do that. <laughs> I don't think it's possible. But not yeah. for me. But that is a little bit more accessible. But that, that's yeah. also very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. And, um, and where do people buy from? Um, my online store. Okay. It's, um, yeah. It's on my Instagram okay. shop, which is called paperlegend.com. Paperlegend.com. Yeah. Okay. Flo, thank you very much. That was fucking mega, dude. It was really nice to meet you. Thanks, and, Amy. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, I'm blown away. It's very cool, dude. Cheers. Okay. Appreciate it. Awesome, <laughs> dude. Huh? Yes. Fetish. Cool. Okay. Fetish. So let's. Uh... Whoa, I'm fucking melting. <laughs> <laughs>